these on? Yes, we're on. We're just waiting for the board to come in. Okay. Oh, no, it's not that board. It's this board. Oh. <laughs> what am I talking about? They have a separate board. You are right. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, what is going on? Where is everybody? <laughs> All right, so we're going to call this meeting to order. It is 10.01 on uh, Wednesday. Budget committee meeting for... Uh, IGS cost allocations, Ms. Colstrom? Um, no. Pledge allegiance. You're right, I'm sorry. Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is actually, we need to have... Go ahead. Commissioner Boyce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a quick report on, um, and probably the only time I'll do this this week, but thanks for the indulgence of the board here. Uh, total line of duty officer deaths uh, for 2019 to date has gone from 39 when I reported last week to 42. And if I may, Mr. Chair, with your approval, uh, just read three small, quick paragraphs. This is, was sent by uh, Richard Thode on our board committee. And uh, by the way, this is National Police Appreciation Week. Um, so it says, Dear, this is from uh, the Commandant of the American Legion. Today is Peace Officers Memorial Day, a day when we pause to give thanks to law enforcement officers who have been killed or disabled in the line of duty. We understand the courage it takes to provide security, rush into harm's way, and keep Americans safe. The sacrifices made by our law enforcement officers deserve to be honored. It's something we owe to our brave heroes and their families. Perhaps it is fitting that a veteran and legionnaire, President John F. Kennedy, initiated Peace Officer Memorial Day in 1962 when he signed a proclamation designating that day. As part of the Police Week, tens of thousands of law enforcement officers have gathered in Washington, D.C. to participate in events to honor those who have, been, who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. The majority of those events are related to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Wall. The memorial feature, the names of more than 21,000 law enforcement officers have been killed in the line of duty in the last 50 years. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Moment of silence, if we may. Thank you again. Okay. All right, so this morning we're going to start with public hearing 4-H and extension. So what we have to do is we have to gather their uh, budget committee members together, and then they will have a, a public hearing and then read their budget message. <clears throat> so here's your... Um, you, you do sit there. I'm, sorry, Lynn, I was wrong on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go on and you um, go to the podium. So they um, first before. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Chair, you have the floor. Well, good. Uh, I found out last night that that's just probably going to happen, so I am totally unprepared. <laughs> you want to gamble, uh, sir? <laughs> I guess uh, I'm supposed to read this? No, oh, okay. Okay, good. If you would take it away then, I guess. Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Cheryl McDonald, and I'm uh, currently the office coordinator Thank you. Uh, for 
the Curry County Forage and Extension Service. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting in for Frank today. He's actually on an airplane right now on his way to Texas on a tourism summit, uh, which is part of the so part of some programming that we do in our office uh, to promote both Coosa and Curry County. So he has given me the job of reading the message. We're going to so, be passing down. This is all for one person. And as I get older, I need to have this uh, budget worksheet blown up. So you guys get it blown up, too. Okay, so we need one for council and one for JP. One more. One more. They both have one now. Who doesn't have two more? Two more here. Yeah. One. Did you want one, Julie? I can share with you. Okay. And here you go. Okay, this is the time set for the Curry County Forage and Extension Service District budget message. Uh, Curry County 4-H and Extension Service District was formed in December of 1986 and voters approved its taxing authority in November of that same year. Its purpose is to provide funding for operation of the Extension Office and delivery of Extension programs in Curry County. The district is authorized to collect ad valorem taxes at a permanent rate limit of point ten twenty one per thousand dollars of assessed value on property within the district's boundaries and these funds are dedicated to the district's operating expenses the district is required to complete the local budget process per ORS 294 the district's proposed budget for the 2019-20 fiscal year includes a general fund beginning balance of five hundred thousand five hundred eighty nine thousand one fifty two of which 300,000 is reserved for future expenditure, anticipated revenues of 306,627, expenses of 306,277, 500 as a placeholder for capital outlay and a contingency fund of 30,628, resulting in an ending balance of 555,380. The proposed revenue reserve of 300,000 for future expenditure will be used for upgrades and remodel of the existing or potentially new office space, leaving an unallocated balance of 255,380 to address cash flow requirements in the beginning of the following fiscal year. Forms LB20 and LB30 summarize the district's current and proposed budgets and provide actual data for the two previous completed budget years. The district does not provide services directly, rather it maintains an intergovernmental agreement with Oregon State University Extension Service to provide extension educational programs and services in Curry County. This arrangement provides considerable leveraging of the district's financial resources. The district provides funding to OSU Extension Service for the basic infrastructure of the Curry County OSU Extension Office, including office space, support and program staff, supplies and travel. OSU provides in-kind support by assigning extension faculty to serve the county and provides administrative and accounting support. The local extension office generates additional funding through program fees, enrollments, product sales and grants, and maintains a significant cadre of volunteers. As shown in LB30, the majority of the expenditures budgeted for the district, expenditures budget for the district is included in the contracted services line item. This reflects the funds paid to OSU for services rendered. Payments are made approximately quarterly on a reimbursement basis. The district account maintained by the county will continue to receive tax-related funds, including interest and penalty payments, and will make expenditures for insurance, administrative fees, and periodic reimbursements to OSU. 
To facilitate those reimbursements, OSU will track expenditures related to fulfillment of its agreement with the district. OSU will account separately for revenues generated through program fees, donations, etc. This information will be made available to the district's board and budget committee. The proposed budget for the fiscal year 2019-20 would certify a tax rate of 0.1021 per, per 1,000 taxable assessed value, the district's legal rate limit. The estimate result will be 285,633 in current year taxes. The budget estimates 12,000 in prior year's taxes and 6,000 in interest earnings. The proposed district budget includes 306,627 for expenses, all of which is anticipated to reimburse OSU for the costs of extension service to Curry County. OSU's reimbursable expenses are expected to include 219,027 for personal salary, for personnel, salary and other payroll expenses, and 87,600 for materials and services. The Curry Extension Office plans to include the following staff positions in fiscal year two, 2000, looks like isn't corrected, but should be 2019-20. A part-time, uh, three-quarter time administrative office manager, a part-time half-time master gardener education program assistant, a full-time 4-H education program assistant, and a portion of salary, 30%, of Outreach Program Coordinator, 4-H, and Food Programs. OSU intends to continue stationing two faculty members in Curry County to lead educational efforts. <coughs> Excuse me. These faculty are focused on watershed management, tourism development, and 4-H youth development. Five other faculty men members stationed in Coos County will retain some responsibilities to serve Curry County as part of their assignments covering programs in tourism and business development, forestry, agriculture, marine and coastal communities, and family and community health. This is respectfully submitted by Frank Burris, County Leader, as delivered Cheryl McDonald, Office Coordinator. <clears throat> I don't know what's next on the agenda, so. Um, so <coughs> next you would ask for um, a, uh, any public comment. Is there any public comment? Yes, sir. Is uh, Mr. Burris in his own plane, or is he flying commercially? He will be flying commercially. <laughs> Though I'm sure he would love to do his own plane. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have some questions yes. on the OSU. Um, how many? How much of this is generated in our county goes to ends up in Curry or in uh, Coos County? Because I understand some of the faculty is is in between. What comes out of our budget um, for Coos County would be just the travel for those agents. So, for instance, um, Norma Klein has been in Curry County the last few days doing a forestry project. Um, and so what our portion of that, we will pay for her travel just down here, uh, so mileage. Okay. And their commitment to the county, OSU's commitment to the county is, is I mean, I, I don't see anyone here very often. I've seen Wiley here since I've been in office uh, only twice, and they were both under invitation. So how active are they in the county right now? Well, with Wiley's position, he is the regional director. Correct. Uh, so he's for the whole coast, um, all the coast counties. And so he'll be here next uh, next week, but he doesn't have a regular um, time when he comes down. It's usually piggybacked on um, different meetings or different projects that he's um, been asked for or is involved in. Um, Frank Burris is here all the time. Uh, Margie House, who's the other uh, faculty member, she's also here on a full-time basis. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Questions? 
I would uh, make one comment that uh, I know that I was part of Master Gardeners, and there's a substantial crew that comes down from the university to help with that education process. So there is a lot of support, and I know that as part of the Master Gardener organization, we constantly call on um, the staff inside of the university for consultation as far as diseases and helping with um, horticultural things going on in the county. Okay. Yeah, I know. I actually know OSU was out at my ranch one time with with some master gardeners right. uh, to look at my greenhouse. And I could uh, add to that too that just yesterday, uh, one of the board of staff members came to a women's meeting and <coughs> explained to us all the forage programs, and I was really pleased to hear how much is being done with the youth of this county through forage. Okay. Okay. I have been with Extension for 23 years. I started out um, as a 4-H um, program assistant and worked that job for about seven years. And then I've been the office manager since then. So you go back to the Doug I do. He hired me. <laughs> Doug hired you. Yeah. And so for him, of course, well, sure. who's between Doug and Frank? Um, Frank moved into the... At that time, they called it a staff chair position when Doug left. So there wasn't anybody in between them, but they had different roles. Uh, Doug's position was staff chair and 4-H. And Frank's position, and it gets, they kind of changed the wording around a lot, but essentially his position was staff chair, watershed. Um, he had some ag. He's a sea grant. Um, now with the tourism thing, he also had a forestry appointment for a while. So, you know, we kind of... Uh, they kind of try to work it out to make sure that we're serving as much as we can in such a small staff. Well, so. you You're welcome. <laughs> so I guess uh, not know what I'm supposed to do here. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Join the crowd. <laughs> so your next move, if there's no more discussion of this budget, do you want to do a move to approve? Okay. Okay, so you have to have it set in a special way, so I'll say it. And then you can say... I'll try to remember. Well, exactly. <laughs> okay. It's um, move to approve the 2019-20 budget for Curry County 4-H and Extension Services District in the amount of $892,785. Okay. I'm going to... Uh, I would move to approve the uh, proposed budget for the extension, 4-H and extension service district, uh, Curry County OSU Extension Office uh, for the year, fiscal year 2019 to 2020 uh, in the amount of... You the total of your budget expenditures, oh, which I'm is sorry. 800. $892,786. There you go. Are there any questions on that? Comments? There was... You open the public hearing, you know. No, I'm just. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I'll sorry. second that. Okay, moving along. Did, did we have a public hearing? Yes, yes, okay, we did. Okay, good. Yeah, nobody spoke? Nobody spoke. So I guess I call for all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's carried unanimously. So it stands approved. Right. Thank you, board. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so you can adjourn. Okay. Do we need to set the um, time out, or will I just contact you later for the adoption? Um, In the past, we've done it, like, right before the well, main the, county in June. And so, yeah, because these guys are your board, right? Mm hmm Yeah, it's, I think we have, for June, is it 19th? Is that the Wednesday before the last? I can't read it that far. I'm sorry, uh, I'm wrecking what, the suit. Can you look at the calendar behind you, Jay? Yes, the 19th is the Wednesday. Is it the 19th? So okay. that's the day that we'll, we're scheduling. For I'm not sure, election. but I think you also have to have a motion to approve the tax rate. There's no tax rate. I thought oh, it was. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Sorry. I, I'm, I'm looking at my motion to approve for the, the transit district, which does not have. Uh, Move to approve the tax rate. Point one zero. 
So I move to approve the tax rate of 0 0.1021 cents or dollars per one hundred thousand dollars of per thousand dollars per thousand dollars of assessed value. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah, so that would be the. So next you do your um, summary published in the paper. Right. And so it's, um, JJ and I will let you know what time uh, your uh, public, final public hearing and your adoption is. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I guess we are adjourned. Then. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Seeking harbor up the Columbia. The officials. There we go. So, do we need to uh, make a board? Or, no, we've already got a board chair for this one. No. This is Kendi meeting, right? No. no because it's a separate board. Um, we start over again, right? So, we start over again and elect a chair. All right, so we call this meeting back to order 1031 on uh, Wednesday. And uh, do I have a uh, do I have a, a motion to elect a chair for the uh, public transit meeting board? I move that we approve Kathy Bernhardt to the public transit board. Curry County Public Transit Service. District. She's not. She's not a board member. She's, she's not. Gonna, these are the board members. The manager. Mr. Chair, the only one on the if I may, I'd like to nominate Richard Doth. Uh, public transit district chair please do I have a second second this is a committee this is the budget committee for the public transit uh, service district oh, okay. so you three are the the board and those three are the committee so all, all of you six are the committee members just like Curry County this is Curry County public transit service district oh, okay. so we have a, mo a motion and a second any further comments all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Thode, you are now the chair. The floor of the meeting is yours. Okay, thank you very much. First, we have the uh, budget message. <clears throat> Basically... I'm, I'm, the, I'm the budget officer, so oh, I will read Good. <laughs> thank you. So you don't have to do that. <laughs> good. <laughs> So the budget message for Curry County Public Transit Service District for the fiscal year 2019-2020 to members of the Budget Committee. The following presentation is the Curry County Public Transit District's the district budget for the 2019-2020 fiscal year, July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. The district was formed in 2006. As a non-taxing special district pursuant to ORS Chapter 451, the budget is a financial and operational plan that presents the revenues and expenditures for the next fiscal year. The district contracts with Curry Public Transit, Inc., CPTI, the contractor, 
an Oregon nonprofit corporation formed in 2006 to provide regular, safe, reliable, and affordable public transportation to senior citizens, persons with disabilities, and the general public of Curry County. The district provides the fleet to support <clears throat> um, the Coastal Express and the Dial-A-Ride operations throughout Curry County with connections to Coos County and Del Norte County, California. Funding is primarily sourced with federal grants to um, Oregon Department of Transportation, Public Transit District, ODOT, $194,572 Coastal Express and $108,018 Dial-A-Ride. The district then passes these grant monies through its contract to, through to its contractor. Both federally funded grants require cash match. The 67,700 Special Transportation Fund Program grant is state general fund money and may be used as federal grant cash match. Added to the funding this year is the state STIF funds for 229,500, which are provided to <coughs> by employee payroll tax and the <coughs> STIP discretionary funds 280,000. The district board is presenting a balanced budget for the 2019-20 fiscal year totaling um, $1,076,790. <clears throat> um, the financial policies, the basis of accounting, the district uses the modified accrual basis of accounting. This means the revenues are recognized when they become measurable and available. The district, through its contractor, prepares and forwards grant funding requests to ODOT on a quarterly basis. When received, those grant funds are passed through as intergovernmental pass-through payments to the district's contractor to fund its operations. The district uses accounting procedures that are in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, the financial statements are issued in compliance with standards as determined by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, GASB, and are included in the Curry County Annual Report as a component unit. Uh, summary, the District Board is, encur is encouraged that continuing improvements in operations and administration made this past year by the District's contractor, Curry Public Transit, Inc., are reflecting more effective and efficient public transit services in Curry County. <coughs> Please call Strum, budget officer. So, uh, the next step is discussion on this. Any questions? Any? A public hearing. Okay, it's a public hearing. Right? Yeah, you have to open the public hearing. Okay. For comments. Guide me through this a little bit. I'll, <laughs> I'll open it for a public <laughs> hearing for comments. Yep, so, and then you just you ask, ask, <laughs> if, ask if there's anyone who wants to, in the audience, who wants to speak on this matter. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this matter? Okay, if you find none, you can close the public hearing. Okay, I close the public hearing. Uh, discussion from the members, right? Or mm -hmm. any comments, questions? If, if you would like. Um, Ms. Bernard? If you would like to discuss anything that has, you know, discuss the highlights of the budget for, to them, to what's, what we did. You, you have to actually talk into the microphone, sorry. I'm Kathy Bernhardt. I'm the general manager of Curry Public Transit, Inc., and I'm honored to be here today to discuss this budget. As Louise has very succinctly pointed out, we are funded through pass-through funds that come through the county and the district. And uh, this year we have the special funding that we've never had before called the State Transportation Improvement Fund, which is kind of a moving target because it's a actual state tax-based fund. So it's based on the uh, payroll taxes of the county citizens. We were given estimates on this um, of how much we could apply for but we honestly don't know how much is actually going to be generated until we get the money. So that's a moving target. <laughs> We're hoping for more. Uh, we budgeted for less, and that's probably the right way to do it. So I'd be glad to answer any questions about our service and about what we do. 
So it, it, just to explain well, a couple of things here, in the budget you'll see that um, we have, say, miscellaneous revenue for $60,000. That relates directly to the supplies um, for gas and diesel. So um, we pay those um, bills and then uh, the we reimburse ink yeah. <laughs> reimburses us for those. Um, there's a couple of things in here that are not, most of these revenues you can see come in and the exactly go right back out. Um, the state money comes in at 67.7, but they allow us to use 2,000 of that for our costs of, uh, of providing this program, which those costs budgeted are $7,000 for audit fees $700 for legal advertising and $300 for um, a membership dues. So basically we get 2000 towards this, you know, $8,000 <laughs> of cost that it costs the county to run this. So what we, what we have is we basically, when they sell the vehicles that are purchased through this program, we keep those proceeds so that helps us um, cover those of extra costs. Commissioner Pash. Um, my question um, is on this, with the, uh, with the stiff money, we spoke a few months ago about improving the, um, the ride share and, and that up in North County. Would some of the stiff money help to improve that? Unfortunately, when we apply for the stiff money, uh, we had to apply by plan. The plan has been approved by ODOT and we have to stick to that plan. So I do have in the back of my mind ways to improve the North County, but unfortunately under the stiff funding it cannot be expended. Well, could we use some of that stiff money in a broader sense on the, on the plan and then maybe earmark somewhat of another part of the budget area into improving that? Because I know it's, it's really important. You can't supplant that... funds on the stiff money, unfortunately. That's a, a state law. You can't supplant anything you're actually doing. Okay. What I've done is I've talked to my ODOT representatives and said that we'd like to try getting something up in North County. And uh, they've said, just be patient. Right now, I'm on the committee that helps set the rules for how these expenditures had to be reported. And we're trying to make them a little more liberal so that if we find after a certain amount of time of running the, the plan as we wanted to, as we planned for, if it doesn't work, can those funds be remarked for something else? We're still working very hard at getting that to, to happen. Okay. Well, thank you, and anything this office can do to help with that, let me know. I appreciate that. Ken, do you have a question? Oh, yes. excuse me, Julie? I have a question. Um, <coughs> the budget has not been listed for capital outlay as for bus shelters. Is that because you feel you're already at capacity with bus shelters? Uh, we've not budgeted for bus shelters. We have three shelters in place, one in Brookings, one in Gold Beach, and one in Port Orford that has not been erected yet. We're still working on that. Um, we can only put bus shelters up at the stops that are in Curry County. We can't put them up in Coos because that goes to another shelter. So eventually we would like to get one um, in Harbor. And those are the four main cities that we, that we do. But right now we don't have funds for that. So yeah, we'd have to apply for funding. We have opportunities to apply for funding all throughout the year. And so when I <coughs> see a need come up, I, I jump on it. I'm real good about asking for more. <laughs> well, I was just, you know, thinking about with the Main Street programs and how they're trying to get matching benches and uh -huh. try and get some uniformity throughout the right. county, and it might be a good opportunity to partner with them to yes. um, share resources and have something that matches or has that same theme. Yeah, that's a great idea. And yes, I definitely <coughs> have talked to them. They, um, the shelter in Gold Beach, I don't know if you've seen it, it's right by the police station, is quite attractive. So I'm hoping that everybody's happy with it. We've gotten lots of comments on it, so. <laughs> Good. Questions? Any further discussion? So we will close the discussion session. And do I hear, oh, excuse me. I move that we approve the budget as written. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, just to add some language to this. Uh, move to approve the 2019-2020 budget for Curry County Public Transit Service District in the amount of $1,076,790. Second. 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 Second, Mr. Chair. It's approved. 
guess so. Yeah. Vote. Vote. Need a vote. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> That's right. That was easy. I don't carry any weight, believe me, so that. <laughs> okay, we'll take a vote. Uh, start with the commissioners. Commissioner Bolton. Aye. Aye. Commissioner. Aye. Yes. 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 So it is approved, right? And, yep, yes. and this is the district that doesn't have this a This zone does rate. not have a tax rate. Okay. Thank you. We're very glad you are at the helm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, for your Kathy. service. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for Kathy. Coming. Good job. Here for any other I think that's all that we have for this one. I can go home in the rain now, huh? There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, Thank you. Go home and enjoy. Not tomatoes rain. on a rainy day. <laughs> yeah. It only rains in Brookings, right? Never. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, you can ask. Yeah. Do they need a motion? Can we have a motion to adjourn this portion? I shall move. Second, Second Mr. Chair. Okay. Adjourn. Can I borrow your gavel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we are reconvening our Curry County uh, Budget Committee meeting. Um, we've processed some items on the schedule already for public hearings. Um, and Next, we're going to hear from elections, Renee Cohen, and she's probably on her way over. In the interim, does any of the committee members have any questions, uh, changes to the agenda for the day? Um, I have a few things. Okay. So I have not found my list. So <clears throat> um, I have a list of the it was up here, but I don't see it, of the uh, departments we have not heard from and are not on today's agenda. So um, I'll just do a quick list of that. Um, although we had uh, council talk several times, we have not talked about solid waste. Um, I have not gone over the um, other requirements um, piece of general fund. Um, we it's not on the list but when the clerk gets here she needs to speak to her records retention restricted fund we mentioned cornerstone but we didn't look at it uh, we mentioned state court security fund but we, we did not look at it we mentioned law library fund but we did not look at it um, i don't really want to put brookings airport fund in i just wanted to tell you that it's no longer budgeted the um, PEG Access Fund we are adding to today's agenda at 2. And um, we did not discuss county school funds. So those, those are the ones that we still haven't touched yet, really. Most of them are just really quick little um, funds that we just wanted to make sure that when we start the process on Thursday and start going through the funds, it's ones that you have seen already. As I recall, yesterday we did talk uh, to, actually John Huddle talked to us about the Port Orford landfill and solid waste was a part of that. It's, no, part, solid waste is not a part of that. It's a separate department in the general. I plan. understand that. What I'm saying, Louise, is on the schedule here, you've listed Port Orford landfill slash solid waste. And we had a time scheduled for that yesterday, and we went over that. I don't know, did any we, of the other committee members I, I believe any? we went over, I'm sorry, I, I just, I believe we went over the, the landfill, but we did not mention or, or discuss the Department of Solid Waste. So. That's why I'm asking the other committee members. Other committee members, do we need to do a solid waste review? I don't think so. I don't think so. And Renee Cohen will be here, and it was the records retention, correct? Um, it's not listed on, on the thing. It just says elections and recording, but they also have a restricted fund that's records retention. Oh, sorry. I'll note that on my schedule as well, so we'll make sure she discusses it. And which commissioner is the liaison for PEG access? None? 
I mean, we don't have one. Is anybody, is there a department head responsible for managing the PEG access? I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> is there a preference on one or the other? We're going to do PEG access now? No. Oh, no, I'm trying to schedule it out. Okay. I'm working on, I'm, sure. that's why I'm writing. Yeah, I can talk on the PEG access. We have somebody that wants to speak on, on uh, a citizen that wants to speak on it, so we have already kind of scheduled that for two o'clock. Okay. Oh, are they Peg access at two o'clock? Yes. Peg funds. Yes, sir. Sorry, excuse me. The folks who want to speak are they in the audience today? They are not here right now, but okay. they that we did notify them that we would be speaking on it at two o'clock. JJ and I sent an email. Good job, thank you. And we wrote that in the agenda yesterday when we talked about modifications to the agenda. Okay. Right. I'm just making sure we have everything in here. Yeah, because we don't have code enforcement today either. That was yeah. done already, right? Yes. That was, done yesterday. that was a double up. And so that leaves county schools out there. And um, let's just roll that in at 215. Sounds good. So I'm just going to recap here our agenda changes. Um, the county clerk is on her way over, and we'll probably hear from her in a few minutes. Uh, that'll extend the time that we take our break. We'll have the compensation committee coming in at 11.15 to review their report. We'll break for lunch. We have uh, recording and elections. Hopefully we can get both of those done. So, recording in elections is when? Yeah, well, when? if Renee's on her way over. Okay. If she doesn't come, though, it would be 1 o'clock, 1.15. That is correct. And if she's not here by 11, we'll just take the break and <coughs> do the rest of the stuff. Okay. Just kind of condense time. Sure. Absolutely. That's what I like about military people on the committee. Very organized. <laughs> Especially <laughs> Marines, right? Amen, brother. <laughs> So 2 o'clock PEG fund, or excuse me, 145 public health, 2 o'clock PEG fund, and 215 county schools. Everybody on board? Yes. Okay. Um, I still have to do other requirements. Could we put that at 130? Yeah. At the code enforcement slot? Yeah. That'll work. And... Um, I don't know if you want to look at Cornerstone State Court Security and Law Library. So we did have some conversation about Cornerstone where we talked about the amount of money that comes in from uh, people who yeah. are submitting uh, building permits, correct? Surveyors. Um, and because the surveyor and Cornerstone Preservation. I know we had a conversation about it. Does the committee feel like we need to talk about that again, or are we good on Well, it's, it's actually a separate fund. Basically, it's an in and out. It's come, the revenue comes in, and then it's transferred to surveyors. So, I mean, I just wanted to say that we haven't discussed it, but that could be the discussion right there. That's all it is. I thought we did discuss it. Uh, the clerk did talk about how she takes in a certain percentage for the Cornerstone yep. fund, and then it is up to the responsibility of the surveyor's office to maintain those costs. It sounds like we're good on cornerstone. Okay, and then um, the law library district attorney did mention it. Um, they have a certain amount that they get for this uh, maintaining a law library, um, and part of his assistance salary is costed there um, to uh, maintain that library. So that's just a separate fund for that. I'm going to put it down for three o'clock. I, I mean, you don't. I mean, that's all it is. If you don't want to really discuss it any longer, we've been moving along pretty fast, so okay. we'll at least get it in for an honorable mention later okay. in the afternoon. That's the law library. Yes, sir. Anything else? 
Well, I think what we will do is we will take our break um, that we're scheduled for at 11 o'clock, and we'll um, be in recess until 11.15 when we come back for the compensation committee. Sounds good. Did Council Hall. Yeah. Did I hear she confirmed with you? Uh, clerk calling? No, I emailed both Renee and Shelley and didn't hear back from them, and I emailed Brenda to ask her to call them and didn't hear back from okay. anybody. I was jealous that she responded to you and not she, me. She did not. <laughs> Yes, and then we'll take public comments when we start up. Yes, Thank you. It is currently 1114. I think we'll start about 45 seconds early if that's not a problem. So I'd like to reconvene our meeting. Person for the compensation board is not here, but we did have a couple of people requesting public comments, so we'll get to those. Um, I'd like to start with uh, Skip Hunter. And we are thinking for three minute time limits. Please. Thanks for having me here. Uh, I had planned to be here at your last meeting, but circumstances prevented me from getting here. Um, I'm not a morning person, and we thought the meeting was at 9 o'clock, and so I was genuinely surprised when the alarm went off that there's a 7.30 in the morning. I, generally speaking, work late till 11 or 12, and by the time I get to sleep, midnight or, or later, I get up at the crack of noon. So uh, I wrote all of this in advance, even though I speak publicly, not knowing what kind of condition I'd be at 9 in the morning. So I'm just going to read it for the record, okay? Um, as a sociologist, I wanted to register my opinion regarding the community standards versus the X-rated bookstore and harbor. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Curry County for taking the lead in addressing this issue. And after doing much research and reading beyond the discipline of sociology, the outcome of allowing or disallowing a pornographic bookstore to remain in harbor ultimately will determine the kind of community that we and our leadership want to have. And uh, so the term community standards comes into play here. Uh, community standards are local norms that provide boundaries regarding acceptable conduct, possibly going beyond legal minimum requirements, in relation, in relation to either limits or acceptable conduct itself or the manner in which the community will enforce acceptable conduct. For example, the uh, local houses of worship in Curry County demonstrate to a large degree our Brookings Harbor community standards. And also there are concerns about people uh, that would be attracted by a porn shop uh, and this could become an issue because my biggest problem is the location of this uh, business it's right at the beginning of a community family community there's only one road in and out every vehicle has to go right past that location all the foot traffic has to go right past that location regardless of the age of the people that are are walking by and I think that it's something that doesn't meet with our community standards. And so at some point, county planners perhaps need to revisit zoning. Uh, I am a uh, member of the city of Brookings Planning Commission, so I want to make it clear that I'm speaking just for myself. I don't represent the Planning Commission in Brookings. But I think the leaders and the community members alike need to send a clear message that these circumstances for an adult video store are totally incompatible with the wholesome family-centered image that Curry County is trying to promote. And because such a shop is legal doesn't mean that people are happy about it. And those people whose professional discipline provides perspective with regards to the sociological outcomes that are detrimental to a small community, I think especially, are concerned about this. Sex trafficking is a growing concern across America and in rural communities, and this adds fuel to the fire. And I just think a porn shop does nothing to uplift our youth who deserve 
the best that our community can provide. And with all of these other meetings going, I just jotted out quickly for the purposes of the budget. I'd like to say that I support the work and the funding of the Community Development Department, the Veterans Service Office, and the Economic Development. And I also believe that... Thank you, Skip. We'll have to all right. call time. Okay, I'm going to say this anyway. Increased travel budgets for commissioners is essential, and I think the new Sheriff's Department's canine program should also be provided for, as should the Sheriff's Department in general. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Just to make sure we get a copy of that, if we could, Mr. Chair. Copy of what he just presented. Could you please provide right. it? Thank you. The next speaker we have is uh, Connie Hunter. Thank you, Louise, for turning on the timer. I didn't turn it oh, on. Oh, so JJ. JJ, oh. I, I, but okay. JJ. Somebody you, is. But you're welcome. I think you was right there. That was Louise. I thought it was me, too, but I was like, I didn't do that. Thank you, Connie. Please proceed. Thank you. I'm Connie Hunter, and I'm a proud resident of South Cree County. Um, first of all, what a great job everybody is doing. And we were talking about an unsung shero, but I want to sing some praises here. Thank you for all that you're doing, Thank for you, keeping Connie. this in such a positive light. And uh, David Barnes and I, even though we don't see eye to eye on some things, we see heart to heart. And certainly on this matter, that there is uh, a lot more cooperation in this effort uh, locally than in a lot of other places. Uh, I wanted to uh, make sure that everybody got a copy of the ODVA bills that are tracked, uh, put a, a list uh, that lists all of the vets and education bills. Uh, we have to really make sure that our veterans are taken care of across the board. Um, also, I want to thank Ken Duque for all of his work in this effort and also all the work that he does with public health. All of the support that we can give to public health, county veterans service office, the sheriff's department, and the, especially their canine program, community and economic development. Uh, Skip and I agree on all of those things, and we are glad to see um, support in those areas, but we also acknowledge that we'd like to see more grant writing uh, and more work with the cities and special districts and really try and develop those other revenue streams. Um, Today, uh, besides being Peace Officer Memorial Day, is the anniversary of when my nephew Kyle uh, died from his wounds in Iraq. So the fact that you take special care for our veterans in Curry County is essential and means the world to my family, but it means to world to our community with the number of veterans and family members in it. And that includes the support that Curry Community Health gives when the VA doesn't perform to those family members and to our veterans. Thank you all for your hard work in this effort. Uh, I'm grateful to be here. And Julie, welcome back. Hoorah. Thank you, Connie. <clears throat> our compensation committee member here. Uh, <clears throat> their presentation is usually not very long. They usually have like a one page summary that's right into the record. Give me one second here. I'm just putting my head together. Oh. So who was the committee? I, I don't know who's on the committee. Um, I think that, Julie, do you know who's on the committee? Not offhand. Um, <coughs> I was the one who was working with them. Who was? Council. Oh, I don't know. Council, do you know who the committee members were? No, wait. This is not handled under county council, so I did stand out of your box. I think it's safe to say we have all got so, <coughs> increased employment. Sorry. I think it's probably in our best interest to... I know that they met. Did someone... And Sue Gold, you actually spoke with some person on this committee who said... Yeah, he told me he was coming today at 1015, Bruce Raleigh. We'll, we'll accept him. And he him is on the committee, so... Whenever they come in, but I think in the 
the spirit of time, we should probably recess for about six minutes. I hate to say this and see perhaps if Renee Cohen can come back over. <laughs> but again, it makes the most sense for her to come in during this time. Um, and we have 30 minutes until noon. I would like to be productive as opposed to non-productive. Okay. I just say amen to that. Thank you. Okay. I agree. So a short recess for six minutes, and um, who's going to contact Renee? Jim is. It's uh, 11:29. Uh, reconvening our uh, Curry County Budget Committee. We have uh, Renee Cohen and Shelley Denny on their She's way over. Just walk in the door, down there. What page are we on? I'm sorry for making you wait. And sorry about the constant changes. It was a 30 second wait. Ms. Colson, what page? Um, uh, which one are you doing first? Well, first I just want to open up with some opening our uh, comments. <laughs> so we would like to start with elections when we get started. Okay. Oh, my goodness. So which tab and page? I'm sorry. 17 is elections. 17. Just a lot going on. It's election time, and everyone needs you at the same time. Are you ready? I don't see why not. Good afternoon, commissioners, budget committee members. I'm Renee Colon, Curry County Clerk, and this is Shelley Denny, our chief deputy county clerk. And we are very proud that together we have over 55 years of public service to our citizens in the county clerk's office. Uh, the county clerk is responsible for the Recording and Elections Division. We have a total of five full-time employees, which include the county clerk, that are um, trained and cross-trained in both divisions. The county clerk recording division records deeds, mortgages, and liens, land partitions, DD-214, military discharge, to name a few. These documents consist of approximately 19,000 to 34,000 land images that are recorded, scanned, indexed, verified, and archived for public access and permanent retention. We are a federal passport acceptance facility, and we process an average of 120 applications a year, and we issue approximately 130 marriage licenses for Curry County. We are also responsible for maintaining the county governing body's orders, resolutions, ordinances, minutes, and agendas for public review and permanent retention. Our office also collects and audits revenue for the County Surveyor's Corner Preservation Fund, Department of Revenue's CAFA grant, and OLIS, which is Oregon's Land Information System, and Oregon's Housing and Community Department. As of May, we have collected over $32,000 for the County Surveyor's Corner Preservation Fund, over $34,000 for the Department of Revenue for the CAFA grant, $3,800 for their OLIS program for the state, and over $206,000 for the State Housing and Community Department. And of a couple of those, the Surveyor and the Department of Revenue, we are allowed 5% administrative costs, which go into our Clerk's Reserve Fund, which is set up by statute. Um, the County Clerk's Elections Division plans, coordinates, and conducts all elections in Curry County. We ensure that elections are in compliance with federal, state, and local election laws. And we are responsible for printing, distributing, designing, programming, and tabulating of the election ballots. Our department also directs the preparation and maintenance of records related to voting activities such as voter registration, precincts, candidates, initiative, referendum, and recall, and special district services. And one last note, since 2015, our voter registration database has increased from approximately 13,000 to 17,000 active registered voters due to the Oregon Motor Voter Bill that was implemented in 2016. So thank you for letting me give you a quick overview of what our functions are. And we're ready for you if you want to get into our elections budget. That's the, that's the computer system where you yeah, all the public is. in New York. CNEs and your candidate packs, 
So that's very interesting. Appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, I'll just go over the major changes for uh, the elections uh, budget this year. So we're in a non-revenue generating uh, cycle. Uh, the county bears the cost for primary and general elections. So you'll see our revenue is down um, because of that. Um, our, the other major change is in uh, payroll personnel. Uh, we do have uh, SEIU, three employees there. I think that's about the ballot box. Uh, we did put in $3,200 to purchase a new ballot box. So for, for the Brookings area, it's time to of course, our loan payment is in there right. for our uh, updated integrated calculation system. Which will go on out with the state uh, or in the treasurer's office because at the time there was still discussion on whether or not we should loan, borrow money from the road fund. We thought it would be an opportunity for us to give back to the road department because we would at least give them the interest in the state interest. But we went ahead and the board decided to have us ask for that loan from the state. So, so right, you'll see a, a sixteen thousand four hundred thirty-six dollar principal payment with two thousand for interest for a total of eighteen four ninety-six. So Ken kind of looked at me. I've been talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> kind of by my figures that if we uh, continue to let this go, I have this. Anybody needs it. So if we continue with the payments, we have a balance of sixty-five thousand three sixty or three three seventy-eight sixty-nine, some change, and the interest would be fifty-nine ninety-four eighty-six in the ballpark. Um, so I know there's some discussion about, or in my own mind, I have some interest in maybe getting this paid off and the interest coming back to us the county and I'm not sure exactly how we're doing I think we looked at the road fund a little bit I'm not sure that's viable at this point but you know we should really look at that's that's uh, almost $6,000 and that's, that was my and that was my ideas I don't know if there's if there's some kind of mechanism in there that would allow us to do it but if there was or try to find a way so that we can Give back to the road fund for being there for us and time of need and, and having us have the opportunity to borrow from it. It was my idea. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. We were getting that. So, any other questions that you have for elections? <laughs> you had some increased uh, travel expenses in there. Right. Um, so, with the upcoming uh, presidential election we are going to be required to do additional training uh, with Homeland Security um, so we did increase our travel budget what are the passport fees just out of curiosity our fee the fees that the county gets to keep are thirty five dollars per application per application is that can you raise that or are we pretty much by the federal government Except by the federal. okay I think that's all I had to ask I'm guessing the copying and printing is up because of the additional ballot issues. Okay. As is the postage. Yes. The postage has now gone up to 55 cents. 55. Mm-hmm. Well, we pay for ballots. We pay um, anywhere from 13 cents a ballot to 17 cents a ballot, depending on whether we have our vendor um send the bulk run for us or if we have uh, additional ballots that we need to send out that we can do a bulk rate <coughs> and some of them we have to send their regular cost 55 cents so updates that are, are constantly being issued throughout the, the process those would get a regular stamp versus the bulk rate permit so when did the this is kind of off subject when did it go up to 55 cents january, january. oh okay I just have those forever stamps. So. I know. Yeah. They're good to have. <laughs> Can we go I on to recording? When they were like, oh, I was, question. Was, I was, please, please. I'm you. trying to work and answer. <laughs> please, I'm not surprised you're multitasking. Uh, thank you for the tour. 
welcome. The assessor and, and all the staff department over here. Uh, what is uh, and uh, oh, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Former Mr. Chair. What are you going to do with all that room over there? And uh, to see how you have uh, organized that, and uh, it's just very well done. And, I, and I'm thinking, for 20-some years, how did you do it in that small area? Yeah, I don't know if you did a tour of our place that we had downstairs, but the boards were basically on top of each other when they were working. One person would have to stand up to scoot the chair in so that the other person could get behind. And so it has been nice to be able to have the room to spread out. Don't, don't tell the, that, that's great, but don't tell the assessor we're going to steal part of his room. Never. I'm kidding <laughs> no, the, uh, election, very, well, very well done. Election boards also appreciate that they have space to work, especially when you have observers that are watching you on every move that you make. It's just nice to have the comfort of having a little bit of more elbow room. Yeah. But you still, you're not wasting any space, no, not a bit. <laughs> no. And you were running up and down the stairs. Because you had two offices on different floors. When we, when we got down to only four staff members, and at 1.3, it the, the issue was we needed to be at the both places at the same time, and that was impossible to do when you're having production was downstairs in the basement, and then the administration and issuing the ballots and was upstairs. So we are very blessed and very very thankful that we have that room, that space. So thank you for allowing us to have it. It was a bright day for us. Just one more for me. Just one more. Okay. Yesterday, uh, Assessor Cohen uh, mentioned that in, I think it was in 2010, he had 13 employees. Do you remember what you had in 2010? I'm just interested in the rate of drop. In 2006, we had six. Okay. And so you are at five now. And we were down to four for quite a while. Yes. And we, you, you all allowed us to fill that vacancy, so we are now at five, including the clerk, except for the three of those folks. The longest person we've had is a year, and the other two are, I believe, at four months. So we are in f major training mode on top of the administration responsibilities. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Are there any further questions for Ms. Cullen or Ms. Denny? Did you want to um, we're going to still talk about the records. And all recording that. the recording budget. You want to go into that next? Yes. Okay. And then we've also got the records and reserve fund. fund. Yeah. So again, in the recording in the recording budget, the changes that you're going to see is that as we try to track our the market on housing, we're pretty conservative on those revenues, and they are they are less this year. So I made the adjustment to reduce the revenues in recording. So that's where the big change is for recording. Okay, here we are. 36, is that what 35, 36, yes. Thank you. And then also I noticed as I was looking at this, I have a number, Louise, I'd like to be able to take out. Can we do that here? Um, most certainly you may. I thought you liked that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm noticing that there's a $700 amount in the mileage allowance, and that's, that needs to be zero. That would be if I was to take a personal car, and I don't. I'm hopefully uh, going to use the new pool cars that are soon to be here. So do you don't, you're not going to spend more than $300 on pool, pool uh, training? You're right. So the motor pool stays at three, but the mileage allowance at 700 can be removed. Let me make a note of that. Yes, I thought you would like that. So that's all we have for recording. You want to go into the clerk's reserve fund? Please. What page? Okay. Sure. A location. Okay. Uh, the reserve fund is um, I'm trying to read sideways. It is really hard for me to do. I know it's right here. It's tab fifteen. Tab what? Fifteen. Okay. You know what would really help maybe for tomorrow is to put the page number on our agenda? Yes, I agree with that. There is no more thing. Page 91. Oh, okay. Day late, dollar short. Well, day late, late, late. Yeah, we should have started that a while ago. <laughs> so the clerk reserve fund is um, the monies that we collect, the 5% that we collect for corner preservation, um, Department of Revenue, and it can only be used for um, certain things for statute. Right. The reserve fund is set, set by statute. 
I can read that if you like. <laughs> so we're actually last year and this year doing something a little different with the reserve fund. Oh, our... right. So back to recording. Uh, yeah, you will notice that uh, some of our um, under our uh, materials and services, some of those line items have been um, taken out of the 1.0 and put into the 1.21. So part of that uh, reserve account is for like our mandated supplies, um, certification, certification label. labels, marriage, marriage certificates, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, so instead of having to each year allocate money out of the reserve to then transfer into those line items, uh, we're just um, spending directly out of there now. It was, yeah, it was a little, you know, we, we just had a lot of discussions during <coughs> our budget interview that it was um, all the revenue was coming here and it was for these specific things and they were being spent within your budget and then you're transferring from right. here. And it made more sense to make sure that anything that really belonged to this revenue just be against that revenue instead of trying to do all the transfers back and forth. And Louise came up with a great idea. Instead of having to put the extra burden work on the finance department and the claims on these transfers back and forth, just spend it directly on the fund. And so far it's working really very well. And so there is a little bit of a transfer over to um, the the reserve the, the recording fund in um, in the general fund, which is to cover the admin type fees that the technology that IT's uh, fees allow you to spend it on. That's great. Any additional questions for Renee or Shelley? Thank you very much. We appreciate the service you guys provide to the county and how you support our folks. And please tell your staff what a great job they're doing. Thank you. A great job. Oh, we do have BOPTA too. I don't know if you. That is one of the items in here Board of Property Tax Appeals. If I'm not mistaken. That's easy. That's the first page. <laughs> it's a very small unit. Page 12. So for this uh, budget, we do have a little bit of money in travel, mills and lodging, uh, motor pool and mileage allowance. Uh, so each year, the Board of Commissioners appoint a pool of members um, to, serve to the, the, board. the board. And depending on what cycle we're in, if the same board is appointed, you only have to go to training every other year. And that's required by Department of Revenue. Um, and most of the time, it's away. Uh, it can be anywhere from Salem to um, Roseburg to Medford. Uh, so we do put a little bit of money in there. We don't always need it, um, but just in case it is there. The Board of Commissioners in the past history have usually rotated that position. And so depending on who serves that year, like Shelley was saying, will depend on their training, whether or not they'll have to travel, usually like to Roseburg. Um, and then I think now they might allow you to do online training if it's not your first year. <clears throat> so if there's no property tax appeals, you're really not using this budget. Uh, we still have to even... I mean, you still have to budget for it, but sometimes there, there isn't adequate budget because you have several, because I think it was a couple of years ago, there were like two or three or something, and, and the budget wasn't adequate because... The, the more board members that were appointed need more money. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so... Any additional questions? Hearing none? Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> Do I reserve the right to come back if I think of something? Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> we may call you back. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did I hear a question about who's on the compensation board? Yes. Here's the order, I think, signed by the board. I did get a note from Brenda Starbird, and I'll okay. read that. So I, pulled, I pulled that for you guys. Thanks, Brenda. Uh -huh. You guys have a great day. Um, John, thank you for asking Brenda to reach out and get a hold of these folks. Um, Bruce Raleigh did call and said he didn't know about presenting today. He's in Coquille at meetings all day. Said he could present tomorrow in the morning or perhaps yeah, Kevin could give the report. So I think if somebody could get a hold of Bruce and just say we're fine with him coming in tomorrow, 
in the morning and we'll, we'll accept a report in the morning. Is that acceptable to the rest of the committee members? Certainly. Okay, excellent. So <clears throat> let's uh, reconstruct our schedule a little bit. So we have a now 1 o'clock and a 1.15 open, and so let's just pull up the 3 o'clock law library to 1 o'clock, and then we'll pull up the county schools to 1.15. Well, both those could have probably be done in less than 15 minutes. And then we'll just keep rolling them on up. Yeah, because I, I mean, I could go over other requirements after that. And um, and I, if you want to, I I did do a handout of the, um, the budget committee request from yesterday. Do you want to go over that real quick before lunch? Yes, and then I'll uh, one last note on the schedule. I'll get a hold of uh, Ben Cannon and ask him to be here at 1.30, just because I think that those other okay. items are probably going to be relevant. And you have sure. the in with Ben, so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, Louise, please uh, bring us up to speed on okay. the documents from yesterday. <clears throat> so, so the request from yesterday, there were um, several requests. The first one was um, the uh, donate uh, canine program that we transfer uh, $50,000 from the general fund um, to get the program started immediately. Um, that amount will only be transferred um, if the uh, donations don't come in by the end of the year. So this is kind of a, it's allowing them to do it without, because we can't really, uh, we don't have the revenue we really can't start a program so until the donations come in we really wouldn't be able to start but knowing that we could do the transfer right away if we had to um, that does allow the program to start immediately but it'll only be transferred in the amount that they don't get donations so that's the fifty thousand um, the next page is marine patrol and that was um, an, a request for uh, five thousand or another $5,000 from the general fund to support uh, several activities, one being um, an additional 750 in overtime, which actually added um, $265 in payroll costs associated with that, and then um, 350 for training, 2000 for repairs of equipment. 250 for travel lodging, 1,000 for assigned vehicle travel, um, supplies um, for equipment, $200, $200 for other materials and supplies, and $250 to the electricity line, which totals um, $5,265, and that is um, offset by the additional revenue um, from the general fund transfer. Any questions on that one? No. Um, the next one is the <coughs> assessor's request. Um, the, what I put in there was loan proceeds. I don't know where the loan proceeds were come, are coming from, whether they're... <coughs> I really didn't even put an account number there because I really don't know <laughs> uh, how how this is going to do. But once we've decided how it's going to be doing, then of course the account number will be assigned to this revenue. If it's a transfer, um, that's the loan proceeds transfer. If it's an outside um, uh, application like the state of Oregon or something, that's where the loan proceeds would come in. And um, down at the bottom, the capital outlay, that's where the purchase of the um, system would be. And then I did put in a $40,000, uh, which is a five-year, it's a very broad estimate of a five-year 4% uh, loan. So that $40,000 would increase the, um, since the assessor is in the general fund that would increase the um, general fund support of his budget by the forty thousand dollars <clears throat> the next yesterday when uh, the assessor was here talking about this I remember there being two 
distinct different categories. There was the, I'm sorry, I'm processing as I'm saying. The server. <clears throat> there was the, the actual software process, which I think going to the hosting service is probably the best methodology. But then there was the cost of translating the information from the previous software system to the new software yes. system. 175. Correct. Yeah. Well, he said 100. And he gave me an email this morning that was 170 because I asked him, was it 175? He says, no, it's 170. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm emailing you the question. And you answer yes because that's what I'm putting in is 170. And I think that was the software cost, not the translation cost. No, he said it was I the believe that's package. everything, including the travel yeah. uh, here, the 20,000 in travel. As well as the uh, mainframe, I think he said was seven thousand oh, dollars. So this one is the one that does not that does not have the server is not needed. He told me. Okay. So it's the one that, that basically I think is the cloud and everything. And Didn't everything come out to three hundred and some thousand? That was originally yes. Okay. But then there's another way to do it. If they store it for us, if they do all right. the management and everything for us. Then we we don't have to do a lot of the maintenance on it and all that. So it, it went down to 170, and that did include the travel. I, I do I do yeah. specifically. He told me that. it was the total package, so the total cost would be 170. That was my understanding because they came up with a three something figure to start with, but then when he explained it, okay, that it yeah. came down. Yeah. They used that their system. Yeah. Okay. So well, I'll you know, check with him or maybe ask him to come back. I, I can just simply ask him the question, too, because I don't think that would be improper. But I recall distinctly two different methodologies. Yeah. Host our own server, host out, and then translating the current software, translating that into the new software was a whole $175,000 right, cost was by itself. The reason I'm suggesting this is because if we're going to fund one element and we miss the other element, then it can't be done. Yes, that's true. So I just want to verify with the assessment. And, and the cost of, of any system, um, the capital outlay on any system, is not only the cost of the equipment and the software, but the installation and training on that. So all of that, that's why I asked them, the whole package, how much is that because that all qualifies under capital outlay well i'll check with him and if if there's a difference then i'm going to ask him to come back here so we can okay. all make sure we're getting the information we need thank you sir thank you louise and then uh so, i forgot where we were so okay so we I, I was just asking is there any more questions on the assessor's page here okay so then the next page <clears throat> was um other requirements and those are the transfers um, this is the other side of the transfers they get the transfer in the general fund gets the transfers out so that changes the marine from 10 466 to 50 or uh, from 5181 to 10 466 and um, is has also uh, transfer to the special projects that's the canine right that's the canine program so this is the general fund side of those two um, transactions in marine and uh, special projects. Any questions? Okay, so <clears throat> the last one is um, the general fund impact of um, the uh, all of the things that happened in the general fund. And I kind of totaled it down at the bottom in a little green box. So the assessor's impact to um, the revenue in the general fund is 40000 The Marine Patrol is 5265 and the Special Projects K-9 program is 50000 So um, to balance the budget, we need to increase revenue by $95,265, and I did that in the beginning fund balance revenue line. Question. And I also handed out, uh, which was, um, we spoke about yesterday, which was the, during occupancy, we just discussed the loan for the windows. And so I did hand out the um, amortization schedule for that loan um, for the courthouse windows.
everybody's trying to get forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Any <clears throat> questions for Louise on those items? Hearing none, it is 11.59, almost noon, so we will be in recess until 1 o'clock before we go. Um, we'll, um, just on the scheduling again here, I want to make sure I've got this right. So we're all prepared when we come back. We have a 1 o'clock when we start back up, we'll get into Law Library, County Schools, and other requirements. We'll have, uh, and we have PEG fund. And then we'll have Mr. Cannon come in at 1.30 for public health. And that should uh, probably take us about an hour or so, I would imagine. Is the DA down there for law library? No. It, I mean, Good. Okay. Yeah, there's kind of just not a lot to touched, he touched on it. Yeah. And I just would like to look at the page of law library. There's really nothing. It's an honorable mention. And we'll do that at 1 o'clock just to go through the process. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We're, we stand in recess. I bet he thought it was 115. It's 106. We'll be going back in the session with the Curry County Budget Committee. Um, when we left off this uh, this morning, before we went to lunch, we made some changes to our schedule. I see Mr. Cannon is here. Uh, I asked him to be here at 1.30, figuring we would get through our other items fairly fast. So the next few items we have are, I'm going to read them in order the way I wrote them, other requirements, PEG fund, county schools, and law library, even though that might be minuscule. And so I'd like to turn it over to Louise to run through those. Uh, when we get to PEG, I think it was going to be John Huddle. Is that correct? Okay. Um, so PEG, I have um, somebody coming in too. Um, and then the next Who is that one. somebody? Probably okay. wanted to address the board about it. Okay, so we'll hold off on PEG funding until 2. Uh, so other requirements, county schools and law library. And state security fund. So let's start with other requirements. Um, and where can we, what page? Mm. The requirements is page 73. Sorry. Thank you. Page 73. <laughs> tried that trick already. <laughs> Try it. In case you're still seven minutes early. Other requirements. We are on page 73. We, uh, Louise is going to run through other requirements. Department. Okay, thank you. Um, other requirements is uh, kind of like non-departmental. It's part of the kind of general general fund. It's not really a department like, like the other departments like sheriff or veterans or something like that. Um, <clears throat> the first um, line is these are all expenditures. Um, other requirements, like I said, is kind of related to non-departmental. So the first one is the, um, you know, it, it was way before me. They when they set the commissioner's fund to be outside of the general fund, somebody said, and and I don't know if this is um, an ordinance or a policy or it was just said that they were going to do it, but they've been transferring direct to the commissioner's fund. 30% of the cost and the other 70% is spread between the departments. So this first line is the 30% of the commissioner's cost that comes direct from the general fund. Um, the next line is 
uh, $25,000 for capital outlay. That is another one of the, there's like four or five lines, uh, something else I also inherited that are um, protection for the carryover. So this is a, is kind of like the other materials and services that's in non-departmental that's like 750000 This is just another piece of that that's um, basically a contingency. The next ones are all the um, transfers that we talked about in um, all of the other departments that we talked about. The, um, the transfer to building for salary for um, the <clears throat> director of operations, the transfer to fair to cover the property insurance on the buildings, the transfer to the re repairs and maintenance fund for um, the five-year projects. Uh, it's their only revenue, it's five-year projects and other repairs and maintenance in the county. Um, the towers maintenance for um, because there's no Title III funds left to support towers maintenance. The towers capital to plan for future um, capital improvements on towers. Economic development for the 10% of the Director of Operations salary. <coughs> uh, search and rescue for the 25% of the or 75 percent of the cost because Title III only covers what is uh, done on federal lands. The Marine Patrol uh, to support that fund because it doesn't have Title III money anymore. And County Parks, which is the 10 percent of Director of Operations salary. Um, now, there's several more in here from the handout from this morning, so those are in addition to what's right here. Um, the operating contingency is 120,000, and um, so that's the other requirements. Is there Maurice, a... does that look like it's been double added to you? There's the total transfers on line 29, that's 533,985, and on line 30, it's 120,000, and then it says 120,000 on the yes. contingencies, and then the add is 764. Are there two one hundred and twenty thousand dollar amounts? No, it's it the line thirty one is a total line. It's a totaling debt contingency. Uh, um, so the different um, categories are uh, personnel services, materials and services, transfers, contingencies, um, capital outlay. So this is just a total. So it's adding 85, 849, 25,000, 533, 985, and 120 to get 764, 834. I see what you're saying, though. And what I think what uh, Chair Duque is talking about is is line 30 also line 31. In other words, is it, is it the same number or is that a different number? Line 30 is the line item. Line 31 is the total of that category, which is contingencies. Okay. It says total contingencies there. Right. And the, what is the, well, I guess my question is, is the operating contingency the total contingency? Is 110490, is that the total contingency? Or is that a different number? Four nine zero. I'm sorry. What <clears throat> operating contingencies? It has a an account number line, number thirty. Okay. Where it says one ten four ninety ten four ninety five. That's the one I was just yeah. reading. Yeah. That's operating contingencies. That is the line item. What page would that be on? Page seventy three. Okay. So. I guess we're still not understanding. I, I figured it out. Uh, okay. I, I was it's, just, it's just a total. There's, it, right. there's the line. The line contingency uh, category only has one line item, but it's it's totaling that one line item. Okay. Because it, what, the point is, there's two one twenty, so two exact numbers there. So um, yeah, well, we're wondering if it was just one is the total, one is the line item. There I was just, just nothing more to add. No. One line. 
I originally took the 533.985 and added 120 and said, wait a minute, that doesn't add up to 764, but you've got to go back up top and take in line number one and line number four okay. and add in 85 and 25, and then we arrived precisely at the 764, 834. So that was Isn't just that a visual cool? deception. <laughs> yeah. We're good. Yeah, and I, and, <laughs> and I, I, I try to... Um, in, in past budgets that I've done, I've kind of highlighted the total, total lines and then the total, total lines, but they hadn't been doing it here, and it's quite the project because this, this budget is all these pages, and there's a lot of totals in there. So I just I haven't done that on this budget, but it makes it easier to read when it is done that way. But you do have total transfers from all the stuff up above, and then you have total contingencies. I have total materials and services, total capital outlay, total unappropriated, which is nothing there, total transfers, total contingencies, and then the total of all those requirements. So that, and since that has no revenue, the okay. contribution to from is the same. I think we're up to speed. Now. Okay. I think I need a new and battery, this, JJ. <clears throat> this page also totals the total general fund revenues and resources. So the, to, the total uh, budgeted um, for all of the general fund is 10,778,594 total requirements. So it's a balanced fund. Okay. Any additional questions for Louise on other requirements? Thank you. Um, county schools. County schools is page 209 it's towards the back it's one of the last funds <clears throat> so this is um, what's called County Schools Fund. It's passed through um, the distribution of Title I money and also, which is forest, um, forest fees, and also the electric co-op gross revenue tax. It's a complete pass-through, comes in, and is distributed to the three school districts in the county, um, which would be uh, North County School District, number one, Curry, uh, Central Curry School District, number 17C, and um, the, uh, it looks like it's missing words here, but it's also the Brookings School District. Brookings it's Harbor. Brookings Harbor. So those are complete pass-throughs. This one has um, a very large budget because this, um, Expenditure is called other requirements, and it doesn't go in the other categories like uh, payroll is a one category and materials and services is one category. So all of those categories we have, this is the only category in the whole county that's under other. And when we appropriate, this has only one thing in it. And if we get more money, we have to pass it through. So uh, we could go over budget if we don't have plenty of money in here to pass through. And when we start getting those SRS money, surprise, surprise, they, they can make this fund go over. So I changed this one uh, from last year and this year to be quite generous in case we have to pass through those monies so we don't go over appropriation level. I just have one quick question. When you pass those through to the school districts, is that based on enrollment in the various school districts? Or? It, is, it is based on the um, previous year's ending um, ADMR. So you, <laughs> so ADM is average uh, daily membership. Okay. And then um, the R is the uh, weighted average daily membership. Okay. So um, actually I showed Debbie how to go online because <laughs> I had to look those up quite often myself and showed her how to, because she was asking the ESD for those numbers, but they're all online, so I showed her where she can get those numbers so she doesn't have to wait to get those numbers when she distributes. 
Okay, thanks. And it's per, their percentage. So if you you add up their ADMRs and you and divide it by the total of those three dis districts to get a that's percentage. The percentage that you get. Right. Makes sense. Any further questions on other schools for Louise? Excellent. And law library. Law library is page ninety-seven. Yes. Thank you. I can speak louder, but if I use my marine voice, then <laughs> I'll sound like court did on day one. <laughs> and which uh, page? It's 97. 97. Thank you. So law library is... is Kind of a, a little fund here. Um, its revenue is uh, the shared state receipts, uh, court receipts, and it's restricted to um, providing a law library to um, the district attorney. And so the bulk of, uh, because um, his assistant does the work of ordering and um, stocking and everything that um, law library she's costed partially to this uh, fund and the bulk of it is uh, doing the books and per periodicals that are required to have available to the district attorney <clears throat> so this is just a I um, mean uh, I think that the district attorney mentioned it in passing, but you didn't actually see that, you know, where the re revenues came from or um, what was actually costed here. So it does get a share of admin costs because we pay the bills and we um, do the payroll. And it does have a space that it occupies. Um, so it does get the admin costs. Louise, I have a question. Do I understand correctly? Some of the books have been stolen. Uh, some of them have went dis, dis have disappeared, and I'm just wondering if we have anything in the budget to make sure that doesn't happen again. Uh, my understanding is it has its own room. I don't know anything about any stolen books, so I I have no idea. Um, I suppose the district attorney would have to, if he needs to replace books like that, he would either do them out of this fund or out of his own fund. I believe Julie is correct, though. Uh, that's been an ongoing problem since when I started with the county back in 05. So, I have, I've, been, I've never heard that, but... Would our insurance cover that, though? Replacement costs? It, I think they find out deductible. way after the fact that something is missing, and so it's just a matter of just trying to catch the replacements. Not only that, our deductible's too high to probably even bother. Some of those law books are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> they took ten of them. Who I hope they read them. Access to this library. <laughs> Say again. Who has access to the library? Well, the way the law library works is you go to the district attorney's office on the third floor of the courthouse and check out the key and then you have access to it. So it's locked at all times, and the key to it is available to the attorney's office. Can so anybody go there? It? Attorneys, yeah. inmates have used it before. Yep. It's, uh, it's for the public. Yes. Okay, that's okay. Any other questions for Louise on the law library? Excellent. Looks like we'll be a few minutes early well, for Mr. Cannon. I'd like to do the state security, which is like one page back. Okay. Page uh, 95. 95. Uh. So um, state court security, um, They this, this is state uh, assessments, uh, criminal cases. Uh, so it's sent here by the state it's restricted um, for spending and the spending is actually through uh, I don't remember what his title is Thomas Langford court, trial court administrator court, trial court administrator he is the one that uh, oh it says it up there um, so he's the one that actually um, 
does the spending on this right now they were doing um, I think a security camera type uh, project over there um, and they're meeting at the end of May I, I think that I mean I was on that committee but I think I, I like said go ahead commissioner your passion <laughs> so right. he's going to be attending that meeting and that's where they kind of do the planning of how these funds are spent downsides I'm familiar with most of these things so are there any other questions from any other committee members okay wasn't there one more there was a court mediation fund and that's the one that's on page 87 So this kind of goes under <laughs> um, the county council, which is another one of those that's either you or me, and I chose him. Um, but he really doesn't have anything to do with this this uh, fund either. This, the state um, has uh, it's passed through by the state court filing fees, and it's used to pay moderators. A mediators um, court ordered mediation for domestic relation cases so um, this has uh, it usually does have a carryover balance it is restricted funds and sometimes it's um, sometimes it's used in heavily and sometimes it's not so there's not really a lot to this fund either <coughs> any questions for Louise on the court mediation fund. I kind of like these. These are, nice. these are very, small ones. That, very uh, small. There's no general fund contribution. I like those too. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that we have talked about everything. The two that's left is um, public health and peg funds, and both uh, people that are here for those meetings are here so excellent uh, mr. cannon please and what tab and page page 4144 is public health that was 44 144, 144. Um, there's two departments for public health one is um, the uh, page 143 um, that's the environmental page, and then there's also the um, public health, the pass-through one. So for your opportunity to entertain us, Mr. Cannon. Okay, I'll try and do my best. Thank you. Uh, so I'll talk kind of broadly about those two areas that Louise uh, mentioned. Uh, first, the environmental health fund. Um, L largely this is based on prior year's uh, budget, but we do expect an increase uh, in expenditure there because we're adding another inspector um, to uh, meet the need there um, with inspections and ensuring ensuring that uh, we're getting those inspections done in a timely manner and we're ensuring the safety of, of our facilities. So uh, that that's on, let's see there. I don't, I don't have a line number here, but it's environmental health services uh, Prior years was 87 or around 60,000. We expect that to increase to 140,000 um, to add that new inspector. That's but line 16. Okay. But uh, all all other uh, items are expected to be uh, similar costs um, in the prior years. This is a fairly new one for the county. I think it was in January 2018. Um, with the state said that we had to have our own file statistics person and not contract that right. so the first year uh last year when we budgeted it was quite hard because we didn't have any knowledge of how much everything was going to cost outside of payroll so this one was a little bit easier because we had a year's worth instead of a couple of months worth of expenditures to figure out the budget for this one right and I think we've uh, I think kind we've of evened out, and we've kind of figured out the, the uh, where the expenses are on that. Um, on the public health 
Now, could you go back a little bit? You were talking about the inspection fees going from ninety to one hundred and forty thousand. Uh, just in case there's people here who are not aware of what environmental health inspects, and then mm -hmm. also talking about the addition of inspecting vacation or the RBOs and right. those kind of things. So the environmental health inspectors are looking at food pool, lodging, and water systems uh, in our county, and they look at a. a uh, various amounts of uh, legislation and laws that they're required to um, operate in a safe manner. Um, and they're working with them to ensure that safety. Um, we take very much the uh, collaborative approach to work with these owners and operators to help them uh, achieve that safety. And uh, we currently have one inspector, uh, Kent Downs, and adding to that uh, to meet the demand not only for current but then the anticipation of adding uh, vacation rentals, Airbnbs uh, in this coming year. Okay. So this uh, also has uh, 0.25 of the code enforcement officer costed to it mm -hmm. um, for code enforcement of your inspectors and um, and it has a 0.25 of Ben here as administrator and then one FTE um, person that does all the vital statistics fees and certificates or whatever she hands out. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Gold? Uh, I just have a question about the Airbnb and the vacation rentals. Mm -hmm. um, I know if the TLT passes, they're going to be included. Are you giving the county your database so we know where those are located? Um, curious. It's a, yeah, it's all public information uh, okay. where, where all of those are. Um, you can look them up on the website. Um, on, on We have a link on the Curry County website as well as on the Curry Community Health website. Okay, and they're all required to go through your, have your services, is that correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, so we'll know where they are, sounds like. Right. We're all required to have licensing. As well. They're required to have licensing. There, there is uh, there is a bit of a challenge there in, in, in licensing that because you know, I'd they look like a house, right? I mean, there's, it's not like somebody opens up a hotel. <clears throat> we, we know when that happens, right? So. See, I'd heard that the Airbnbs in the unincorporated incorporated areas did not need a license. And the reason I'd heard that is because I had a friend that wanted to open one up, and mm -hmm. they called the county and said, you know, what kind of licenses do we need? Don't need any licenses. That was what we had a couple of meetings ago, our BOC meetings, yeah. about licensing. Currently, that's Oh, that I is, know that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's, it didn't happen yet, though. It hasn't happened yet, but we are we are going to have require a license from all of them, I believe, if the board votes, votes that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Ben, correct me if I'm wrong here, sure. and, and certainly feel free to talk about this a little bit, but the goal isn't about collecting money from people. Right. The goal is about public safety. Absolutely. It is. Making sure when we have tourists come to our county, but they're not staying someplace where they're going to get sick. That, that's ultimately the goal. Well, but, yes. but my point is we need to work together to make sure that everything's happening. Agreed. Okay. And, and that safety piece, we do receive um, complaints about some of these facilities that we currently do not license, so we don't have oh, that. Oh, interesting. Okay. We don't have that ability to work with them and enforce in that manner. One of the biggest areas, it's a, again, if I'm off base, please let me know because Ben deals with this more than I do, but hot tubs are a big issue. Yes. People will often let those things go for six months without changing the water, and people can get really sick from doing that. So, no, you hit it right on the head. Things that when they go out and check, they're checking all of those things again, really about safety for our tours. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more oh. questions on the environmental health side? On the uh, public health side, um, for these public health programs, uh, OHA, the state, has not fully released uh, all of their budgeted numbers. So that, again, this is an estimate based on prior years. Um, we do estimate, based on what we do know, on several programs that we have heard about, uh, you know, kind of additions or subtractions on the budget, we do expect currently about a $25,000 decrease in public health uh, funds from the Oregon Health Authority. Um, and that's based on several programs. The tobacco prevention program, um, we're, we're going to see a decrease there, uh, but also seeing an increase in emergency preparedness um, and also in reproductive health. So it evens out to about a $25,000 decrease um, in funds that we expect. And these funds are completely passed through, 
Correct. They come in and go immediately back <clears throat> out again. And is there a gap between what you receive from the state and what the actual cost of delivery is? There is. There is a gap there. Um, you know, with, with the way that we have to run these programs, there are often uh, requirements on the number of staff, the FTE that we devote to these uh, programs, and then just the cost of uh, materials, supplies that we do to provide the services. Um, and yeah, we, we run a deficit on these services. So about what percent are you running a deficit on the services? It's gone down, so we, we've, we've reduced that deficit. Uh, when I first started, we were running about 300,000. We've gotten that down to 150, around 150,000, so on those services. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mr. Cannon? Richard. Yes, I have a question. On um, line 18, I see that the second preceding year was 40,000, then went to 180, then 400, and then to 575. I'm, I'm not totally understand what that program is. Maybe someone could tell me. So um, <clears throat> when the county uh, and Curry Community Health first split off on February 1, 2013, Curry Community Health left with all the authorities and signed all the contracts directly with the state. The county was a party to that, so they call it a third three-party contract. Well, the state started changing the rules on that and made requirements that the county uh, maintain their own environmental health and maintain their own vital statistics. So when we go back to the second preceding year, we were virtually signing all the contracts with the state, and this was just a small fund at that point that the county was passing through to us. Then when you see the first preceding year, those are all the environmental health funds. And now when you see the new ones at, at that new number, what you're seeing is all of the public health programs because now the county and the state are the only two who sign that contract and then we subcontract with the county and then the county sends those funds to us that's why the change so in in the first preceding year column that started in january so basically if it had started in july it would be the four hundred thousand that's the budget for this uh adopted la this current year but since it started in january it's half of it Okay, well, I was just curious what the program was. That seemed like a, it did, a it big did, jump. It from was a big change. <laughs> Five seventy-five, but I don't have any knowledge of the program, so I can't really give a good answer. There's a bunch of why. programs. It's uh, women, infants, and children, known as the WIC program. There's reproductive health programs. Safe there's communicable water. diseases, mm -hmm. uh, environmental health, and come to see what. There's just yeah, I forget how many programs, but there's a few. Uh, one, okay. two, three. Thank you. Just yeah, about curious. And some of them are passed through from the federal government. So I think about half of them are <clears throat> federal to state, state to, to pass Title through. five, Title ten, those are federal. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the WIC program is federal. WIC program as well. Safe mm -hmm. Waters is federal. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mr. Cannon? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ben, appreciate you thank coming. You, sir. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Thanks, Ben. Mr. Chair. Sir. Well, while Ben is here, maybe now's a good time. We've, we've talked about the county licensing. It, would it be possible to have that? And this would be a question directed to Council Huddle and Director Smelzer. Uh, could we have a workshop on that county licensing? You know, whether we pass the TLT or not, uh, you know, listing uh the the bed and breakfast the rv parks uh do i mean i'm not afraid to make that decision personally myself uh but i think we might want to give the public a little heads up and we might want ben and karen larson to come back and offer uh you know information for the public on that so i, I hope now's a good time to run that by real quick and see if we can accelerate this and get started on that process not wait Sure, I do have all the information on my desk. The problem is some of it is not in Word format, so it's a matter of retyping some of it. We also have two versions that the county has discussed before, and still trying to compile all the data as to why they liked one version over the other version. Um, we did agree to bring that back for a workshop, so we still will be bringing that back for a workshop. Do you feel like 20 seconds too too quick there, Director? Okay, fair enough. 
then then I, I, I want to encourage you to get it on just as soon as we possibly can. One uh, person gave public testimony not too long ago that the county uh, was afraid to do that a year ago or two years ago, whatever it was, and I, I don't agree with that. I, I think that, I think by and large, the community will support it. I could be wrong on that. Thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> good with moving on to the PEG fund. Uh, is Mr. King here? Carl, how are you today? <clears throat> Julie, do you have that handout? What page? The, um, it's on page uh, 178. Thank you. No, I don't available Saturday night at the library? I won't be there Saturday night. Good. Can I use it? <clears throat> you, if they don't give you a ticket. Well, I got your permission. You have my permission. Yes. Okay. Thanks. I don't know if that's, I'm, just, I'm giving you something of value that now. We'll take care of business. Just put his name, address, and phone number on underneath your windshield wiper, and that way you're going to get a ticket. Carl will cover it. Thanks. <laughs> Carl King, uh, oh, excuse is, me. live on the Sika Road, and sure do. Uh, I had addressed the Board of Commissioners uh, several weeks ago at a workshop on the status of Curry County Voices uh, for the benefit of the members of the Budget Committee who are seeing this for the first time. Yeah. Uh, starting in 2015, I believe it was, the county became cognizant of the fact that the equipment that was in the closet behind here was malfunctioning more often than not, and that the programming that was going on to the PEG channel that Charter is required to make available to the county was not meeting the requirements to keep it. And a task force was appointed which made a recommendation to hire a consultant and to upgrade that equipment and to get into compliance and that was year one and the task force suggested that after that was done that you could the county could look at having a public access component uh, PEG stands for public educational and government programming not public education about government, which was really all that was happening in the past. Uh, as it turned out, there were technical equipment issues as to starting up an entire second channel, which you would have the right to do if the equipment were there. And so Mr. Huddle and I negotiated and the Board of Commissioners granted to the Gold Beach Rotary Foundation doing business as Curry County Voices, a permit to operate on three days a week educational and governmental programming. And that permit, that agreement provided that PEG franchise funds would be used to buy and to transfer to Curry County Voices a limited amount of equipment. PEG finance fees are regulated by federal government, federal regulations. Under the statute of 1984, the county as franchisor of a cable system was allowed to charge a general franchise fee of 5% of cable revenues. And defined out of that was PEG franchise fees, which were fees that the county and the franchisee could negotiate that would be paid but had to be used only for equipment 
to purchase and install equipment to make that cable casting possible. When we started talking, the, and as of today, each subscriber to channel to the cable through the county franchise pays 65 cents a month in peg franchise fees. Each of us has on our invoice another number that represents 5% of what we pay for cable that goes to the county as well. As of this coming fall, when the franchise gets renewed, the amount will drop to 50 cents. When the negotiations, well, that, that going back before that, the agreement was that the county would acquire, and it's attached to the agreement, equipment mm -hmm. totaling just under $15,000. It was three sets of cameras, two sets of computers and software, a sling studio, which would enable us to do things that we don't do, frankly, but it was part of the equipment that through our agreement with Brand Media, we loaned to the county to do the swearing in across the street at the courthouse and running more than one camera. Uh, we have been using that uh, since last September. When it came time to negotiate with Charter, Charter made a proposal to the county to reduce that Hague franchise fee to 10 cents. I believe it was to 10 cents which would have made a substantial reduction. Currently, as of last year, last fall, you were getting around $4,500, $4,300 a quarter in peg fees. You've budgeted for $13,000 coming, this coming year, which is probably a very good number. But if it had dropped to 10, 10 cents from 65 as opposed to 50, you wouldn't be getting enough to maintain your equipment in the closet or to do the upgrades that have been recommended to you. We gave, and what Julie handed out that I brought with me, Mr. Huddle, a two-page memo of support to keep that fee up. A 10-year plan for what Curry County Voices could project out, all things going well, what we could use to enhance our ability to provide programming uh, to the citizens of the county who are on the cable system with the same premise that the county uses that once we do that we can also put that programming on a website and make it available to everyone in the county. Since I prepared that two-page document we've had six months of operation and we're finding things are going very good, but they're going differently. We're finding that you gave us money for two computer systems. We had a private donation of a third. And when we do a training of up to six people, it's great to have three computer systems so they can work in pairs. But on a day-to-day -day basis, many of the people who are producing programming for us have their own computers, better software, and so we really don't need, at this time, and probably won't need for the foreseeable future, any more computers. So to the extent that our year one projection was for another computer, we don't need that. Where we are finding we could use help with equipment is with cameras. The cameras with all the peripherals, the tripods, the special microphones and the like. We have the three. We have to avoid double round trips to move them up and down the county. We have dispersed them. Our original plan was to have all three cameras stored at the library. We have free storage space at the Gold Beach Library. And we found that made it very difficult for people in the South County and the North County to have access because it meant two round trips, one to pick it up and one to bring it back. So we have located a safe location in the South County. We have a camera down there all the, all the time. 
happens to be at Curry Community Health. Uh, one of their staff people is a trained producer for us. The other one, very active in the South County, works for the Brookings Harbor High School and is producing with the high school programming for us. We have a second one now essentially permanently signed up to the North County where we have two citizens who are producing some very nice programming for us. If you turn on your channel this weekend, you will see some of their work product, which leaves us with only one camera here in Gold Beach. And quite frankly, we have times that it's impossible to meet all of the requests for that camera. We would love to have two cameras in each location, but we're, we're also blessed with the fact that two of our producers have invested in their own cameras. So in this, and they both live in the central part, central part of the county. So we really can get by with, if we had two more cameras, at some point during the beginning of the next fiscal year. Now, my concern when I spoke at the workshop was to make sure that we're not asking anyone to approve buying those cameras today. We know that you still have work that Brant Media needs to do, I believe, in the closet. I'm not sure they're completed with all that. So my suggestion to the Board of Commissioners is we'll come back sometime after you know you've met all those requirements and ask, and we will ask for two more cameras to be purchased and given to us. And under our agreement, we own those cameras, but if we terminate our rights or you terminate our rights under the franchise agreement, the ownership reverts back to the county. But I think that's the safe way to go. And I, I assume that what your budget is, you're carrying forward the carryover of the 17-7 and recognizing the 14, 13,000 coming in. And again, I think, you know, that's a very safe number. I, when I was at the workshop, I mentioned there are threats to franchise fees coming into the county. Uh, the one that's not threatened in Curry County is that franchise, the paid franchise fee. There's an older population. It's not getting younger. Where most public stations are losing revenue, peg fund revenue, it's where younger people are moving in and cutting the cord and using the internet and wireless television services. That's not happening as greatly here as it is elsewhere. Uh, the other challenges to the peg fees are happening in Washington, D.C., and you, you, I warn you that there's a hearing today in the Congress uh, uh, where there is a serious discussion of the FCC changing the rules and allowing Charter to charge against your general fee the cost of having the, the channels free program, free access for the schools and the like. And that's a real concern in the industry. And I, I, I'm keeping on top of that, and I will keep Mr. Huddle on top of that. But again, that doesn't affect this this fund and so you know i'll answer any question you know basically curry county voices is totally privately funded through june 30th of this year we've been funded by grants and starting on july 1 we will be funded by sponsorships uh our budget is 9500 for next year we already have 4900 of pledged sponsorships and so we're very confident that we will be financially capable of doing what we want to do, and that is to provide some really interesting educational programming, programming about government, have it on Channel 182 three evenings, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, starting at 6, uh, and on the website and on YouTube so that anyone in the county, whether as long as they have at least a computer, or access to the wireless can, can watch our programming, as well as people in Hong Kong and Beijing and wherever <laughs> else. So, any questions? Uh, 
I want to thank you for your passion about this uh, subject and your stick to and keeping this <clears throat> moving forward. And um, I think it's something that's needed in our county, and it's, I'm thankful that you're, you're really talking about it. Thank you. You know, I, 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 I read my emails early in the morning, and I, I was pleased to get one this morning that the community cable TV group in Cambridge, Massachusetts, is looking to hire someone for the summer to run a summer educational programming for teenagers learning how to produce programming. And that's a program that I'm, I have <coughs> through a foundation back there supported for over 10 years. And it's moved into the school system where that school system has four classes available for its students on filmmaking and creating job opportunities. We, we're not there yet. Those systems have hundreds of thousands of dollars of budgets because they negotiated franchise fees before 1984, and they get the entire franchise fee. We're not asking the county to give us the 140000 I was just going to say the kids that I know that are involved are very excited about doing this, and they love this computer stuff and production. So I think it's a good program you're running. Thank you. And your, your, your school system is the most responsive. We hope to be doing that in all three schools. We were able to, with private equipment, since it won't go on the channel, yesterday film the Knowledge Bowl that took place at the Gold Beach High Library of the seven local high school kids, uh, College Bowl for high school kids. Uh, and again, we don't have consents from kids to put it on any TV channel or on a website, but we're going to edit that program and give it to each of the schools. Well, and I think it's good that you're highlighting all of these wonderful things the kids are doing because we've had some, like in Brookings Harbor, they had the knowledge bowl that went national we had the robotics team that won state and so they need to be kudos to them i think that's important well if you're if your group on the knowledge bowl was in gold beach yesterday you'll be able to go to school and see a film of that within a week all right good thank you <clears throat> any other questions for mr king again thanks we appreciate it i i have a comment yes ma'am so um there was the handout, um, and what happened was I budgeted for PEG access, and if you notice in the budget, it's $10,000 that's budgeted for fees because my understanding was that the, um, the fees were cut. So I, I was a little conservative. Uh, we were getting about 18000 and I did bring it down to ten. Um, so the, what's budgeted there for the $25,000 is um, the uh, what Brant Media the fifteen thousand for the backups that they want to purchase for next year during next year, and then and then the rest of it was is just basically kind of there because uh, um, it's a balanced budget and it gives them opportunity to do something else if if they decide during the year. So. I did talk to uh, Mr. King, and he started. He talked to me about um, the two cameras, the twelve thousand um, dollars that he wanted to present to the um, budget committee. So I went and I kind of did a thinking of where we were so far this year, what was planned for this year, and where we would be by next year to see if that would have been possible. So um, on the carryover revenues there, in 2018, 19, there was actually 23,724, and we were estimating to get a total of 13,000, and we're at oh, 9,000 now. Um, a little low because that's 69 percent, and should be 80 something percent here. Um, and then uh, this year. I don't think they've been paid for yet, but we were supposed to order converters and a bulletin board, and I'm not sure what the bulletin board is, but Brant Media does. Um, so we were going to spend 19000 So that's how I came up with these numbers, and I did put an estimate of 13000 again next year. Um, so this handout really does not reflect this budget. 
I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of that. That we, um, I was trying to see if if what Brett Media was doing and what um, Mr. King was requesting that we uh, possibly put in the budget for next year would actually be possible. And that's what this handout was kind of calculating. Just a side note that Brent Media did confirm with me that they will be making those purchases before the end of this proposal. And I thought they would be, but I, I just, I mean, I, I am seeing zero. And so I did talk to Julie about it. I said, do you know where they are on those purchases? And, and I was pretty sure that they were going to do it by the end of the year. They always do. But I hadn't seen anything come through yet. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions or comments on PEG? So what I'd like to do, I'm recommending that we take a brief environmental break, <laughs> comfort break. Um, for right now, it's 2:01, and come back at 2:15. Um, and at 2:15, what I'd like to work on is the schedule for tomorrow, so that we're we have an idea of what we're doing tomorrow. Um, at John Jesuit, would it be possible for you to print out the um, schedule that you have there, for tomorrow? There is actually no schedule tomorrow. Tomorrow is, is basically discussion. So you made a public it's, it's announcement it's and it was 10 to 5? Right. It looks, you know, like, um, Got it. Don't we have one person coming in the morning? Well, we do now with the compensation yeah. committee. but. That's why I want to come back at 2.15 and assemble what we're going to do tomorrow. So we're, thank you. So we're fairly organized tomorrow. So uh, to let you know what we do usually is I'll um, put this budget up here and we'll kind of kind of scroll down through each department if you have any comments. And so we'll stop at each department and say like BOPTA and you'll say uh, approve BOPTA's budget. And so if there's anything that changes, We'll just go through and say whether you improve, and then I will get the final number because right now, <clears throat> you know, I have to, you have approved the tax rate, but you also approved the total dollar amount. With the changes that we've done so far, um, that will be different from the, um, the budget message because it's, you know, you've made changes. Um, but tomorrow you may also, as you're going through, make changes. So I, I mean, there's one that came through today where they want to take $700 out, so that's going to be another change. Um, so I have to have some time in between where you, where you we don't have any more changes to the budget. Give me time to add everything up, make sure that you're approving the dollar amount that you need to approve. We'll work all that out at 2.15. I don't okay. have any problem with that. So we'll take a brief recess and be back at 2.15. Thank you. And also, it would also be to discuss topics that are exempt from disclosure under the public records law. So that would be um, 192.660 sub 2, I'm going to say sub F. But um, anyway, those would be the two. Mm. Would you like to do that off the top of your head? I did. I'm just going to look it up. But uh, I know 192.660. <laughs> That's the ones on the back of our sheets all the time. Yeah, and then it's got the subsections. There's probably ten different reasons you can go into exec session, and you're talking about the labor negotiations, and then there's also um, to discuss matters that are exempt from disclosure, which would also be the same material um, for us. So that's fine, and then JJ has to go and get a new chip to put in here to record us, so... Okay. Once that comes back, then we'll... And then the outside speakers will be turned off as well. I don't think they're turned on because we haven't had an overflow capacity. They were on this morning when I was out there. That's I thought, thought it was so automatic that they went on. No, it no. is not automatic. There's a switch, but okay. uh, David Barnes is going to be our tester. David, are, are we on or not? Check, 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 check. They are on. Hold on. Keep going now. Check, 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 check. Are we on? Thank you, Ken. I Thank you, David. They're on. Usually, they usually are only on until we get into. Uh, they're only on when we have a packed house. Those darn Marines trained me too well. <laughs> so, Ken, are we going to have the uh, negotiation team? 
Tracy, can you give me and Julie and Julie? No. Just going to, as a committee talk, I think the commissioners have the information that we're going to need. It's, it's uh, I think we're good. Just with the commissioner, the budget committee and council. Right. So it's DNF, and that's fine. And so we've got that on the record. I know JJ's got it. Thank you. See you in a little bit. <laughs> All right. Thanks, David. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. So, JD's doing the ship. We'll close the doors. Julie, are you going to get the doors in? Yep. Okay. Connie, we love you, but <laughs> get out. come and see us tomorrow. and you need the right place to fine tune it, build it, launch it. If Start our uh, meeting back up. This is the Curry County Budget Committee. And the time is 2.37 p.m. So for tomorrow's schedule, um, we'll start at 10 o'clock. Uh, the compensation, a, a representative from the compensation committee will probably be here. And is who, who is going to contact that person? Well, ideally, John, if possible, we'd like to set him for like a 10 15. Okay. Uh, but the other side of that is if that doesn't work, we'll just take him whenever he can get here. <laughs> so the, the last I heard about that group is that they had a meeting on April 22nd, which was a day I wasn't able to be there, but I don't know if any staff attended that meeting or I read uh, your email to them about the You read it to them? <coughs> okay, and then they just did their business? Yes, because uh, Julie Swift provided numbers. Okay. All right. Comparisons to other counties. Okay. So that's really the only process point we have tomorrow, other than starting to go through the budget. And I concur with what Louise was saying earlier. To start from the beginning of the book, let's not take it out of order. Let's start at tab number one and just march through yes. um, and process them one at a time. And uh, obviously, I, I, I'm hopeful we can get through most of this tomorrow. This is not a mission for me to rush through the process. Uh, I certainly want to take our time, but I want to, you know, obviously be really focused on where we're at and what our time constraints are. Um, does anybody else have any other questions, comments, feedback? I do have one comment um, for those of you that may not know it was released this morning. Um, that um, the Interior announced 30.1 30, 30 million in payments to rural schools, so the SRS money will be coming in this year. Um, it's it, to be divided 30.1 million between 18 uh, Oregon counties in Western Oregon uh, for secure rural schools. So that is done. Um, we also have the um, the $106,000 that's going to be being released back to us. Um, the sequestered amounts, and then um, one more note for the budget committee. In my meeting with NACO in Washington, Merkley and um, and Wyden did both say, um, not only at the podium but on the record, um, that they do believe by August or September they will have PILT money in perpetuity for rural counties in Oregon. They're not sure of the number yet, but they at least that way we can begin to budget and plan for it. Great. Hopefully by August or September we'll have that law in. <coughs> Commissioner Boyce. Mr. Chair. Yes. He's Other the Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, Congressman Walden, but also Congressman DeFazio, he kind of works more behind the scenes on this, but both of them have, and their staffs, have been putting in a ton of time. I also want to just give kudos to the 20000 a year we pay to ONC for our dues, the ONC uh, BLM counties. Um, they have, uh, for what we pay and the work that they do and what they've accomplished, uh, it is it, not that this has been an issue, and although some counties are looking at opting out of AOC and ONC, um, it just is a great tribute to the work that they've done. And this equestrian thing, uh, that comes back to Trump. I'm going to give him credit here because he basically said, give the counties back that money because the Forest Service just arbitrarily said, we're just going to keep 6%. The counties are going, what in the world? So that money's returned, and they just made that decision. 
and uh, yes, 106,000. Uh, and none of that, I was telling uh, Budget Committee Member Alcorn that uh, the still, when it comes to the PILT payments, we're still down quite a bit from what uh, Wald was able to accomplish last year. But we still have road fund money coming into the Forest Service. We haven't had a lot of timber contracts, and they're doing more in the stewardship program all the time, which means the money doesn't come back to the counties. It helps long-term in reforestation because that's where the money goes instead of the counties. So it's, it's a bittersweet thing in that regard, especially after a major fire. Um, but and the only other thing I want to add to that is the endowment, the uh, Rural Stabilization Act uh, and force management that uh, Wyden in particular has been working absolutely overtime on. I've been spending a lot of time with Mary Gartrow. And uh, if that endowment uh, goes through, that's what Senator Crapo in Idaho, if that endowment goes through and the chances are pretty good, it's an uphill push. Um, you, may, you use the word perpetuity. And that's, that's, you're going to be able to get money out of that three ways. You can loan, you can get a grant, or you'll just get the traditional annual payments. So the reason I'm referring to it as an endowment is because of those three options. So, you know, I hate to say that because we have money coming in, and, they, you know, it's like, let's spend it. So I want to see that money go in reserves to what extent it comes and gets beyond what we're normally getting in. Thank you for that time. Commissioner I just have one comment. Uh, I know that Curry County get a, gets a certain percentage of that PELT money. Could we get an actual figure on that? Not yet. They haven't decided how much. Uh, he's the head of, um, Wyden is the head of the, Repub or the Democratic <coughs> side of it, and he has the financial, um, I, I, don't, I don't know government policy, the head guy in the Republican Party that's actually the financial guy behind this. Um, he is also on Wyden's side on this. They don't know a number yet, but they are, they are pretty sure they're going to just... I guess I misspoke. I should say the SRS that we just got it. They haven't cut up the pie yet. Okay, but don't we get a certain percentage of the pie? It's 18 counties, it's 30.1 million, and they have not decided yet what percentage goes to each county. Oh, okay. Well, that's our 928. That has been decided. Just, you could speak I to think, that. I think that actually has already been received in this. Yes. Uh, that announcement i think that money just got received like in the last couple of days okay so it's not really a percentage but it, it it's, it's, it's spread through um and i don't think that's all oregon counties i think that is part of five counties. different states it, it, it is all oregon it's it's all beyond counties in this case oh, and so, oh. yeah okay. but it is a big it is a big program but yeah. We care about Oregon, so. But that <laughs> was nine hundred thousand. Did you say nine hundred twenty-eight thousand? Okay, I, I don't know. I, and I know included. That got some money, but I and um, and she has to receive it, so I I don't know. Yeah, I was she just going to say I think that's, that she got it. That's an important piece before we. It's very impactful to the budget that we're talking about. Well, yes. oh boy. But actually, it's this year's money, and we did budget for it, so it's not really impactful in that so it's already it's, in here it's okay. already in here but it could have it been doesn't come next year uh, so hurrah no nope. it's one time money so. <laughs> glad that we didn't get a letter this morning saying by the way you're not that's the point <laughs> <laughs> that's good i share your sentiment on that <clears throat> but yeah a lot of that money is already budgeted for. we're also getting 76 on title three which that is that figure up to 700 800 000 now uh, I handed that out the other day, and I don't remember what the goal is. And that's strictly search and rescue. And, and that's at the end of last year. Rich, yeah. excuse me, did you say you already included that money in the budget? We included receiving the SRS money that we were supposed to get this year in this year's budget. That's, Except for the general fund, and that that's one was to protect it for carry -over. Before the money that they announced today? That's the money they it announced is the amount yesterday. Money. They announced it yesterday. Yeah. And was uh, the full amount in there, Louise, the full 928, or was there a You know, amount? I don't know what the number is. I just know Debbie kind of, as I'm passing through the hallway, said we got some of the SRS money. So I don't, I haven't been in here, so I haven't seen what it is yet. The 928 is a very reliable number. I, I'll stick my neck out there. Because I thought we got this book a week, the first of this week. I'm, I'm sorry. What's your I'm point, sure Mister? My about. point is, I got this book. Money yeah, how long ago was this that? year's money, not next year's money? In we this understand budget, that, Louise. Year. We're asking you when was this money put into? Yesterday, wasn't it? 
Last year's budget. So you, you yep. Last year's budget committee, we put in for the final year of the SRS two two year one time payment. So I, I I mean it's not in this year's budget because there was two years that we were going to get the money the first year. They told us during the year, so it wasn't in that. Oh, <laughs> second year and Debbie here to Debbie. Oh, watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just trying to figure this out. Okay, so we've got Title I, 1, 928, and um, so, and then Title 3 is 76, so we've million four. So and title, title 2 is 87. So Title, yeah, we don't actually get the Title 2, it goes directly to... We just got that money. Last year they sent us Title 2. <laughs> Accidentally. We're not sending it back this time. Man. It's already added. <laughs> So it's, only, it's only 87 though, for this year. I think they at any rate. anticipated. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? The national debt clock just keeps going. <laughs> that was uncalled for. Sorry, Mr. Chair. So let's reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. and we will adjourn for the day. Good idea.